Hello, I'm Klaus Aranha at the University of Tsukuba, and this is Experimental Design for Computer Science, Week 2. The topic for today's class is Statistical Indicators. Imagine that you just finished running an experiment and this experiment produced some data. How can we transform this data into new information about the world? That's the main topic that we're going to study today. Starting from this class, I'm going to dive a little into the mathematics used in experimental analysis. So, if you have any questions about the concepts of this class, write them down and bring your questions to the office hour. Okay, so last week we talked about what is science and how we can use the experiments to discover new information about the world. Starting from this lecture, we will study how to use statistics to analyze the data that we get from an experiment and how to understand the conclusions from this experiment. In this week, I will talk about point and interval estimators and how we can use them to explain data from an experiment. This is a very basic topic, but which will be very useful for the entire course. Before we begin, I want to explain a little how I use, the, I use the word data in this course. In computer science, when I say the word data, we think of things like the training data set of a neural network or an SQL database or the log files of a server. Of course, this is all data. On the other hand, in this class, I use the word data to talk about something that is a little bit different. Here, when I say data, I want you to understand the result of an experiment. So this result of an experiment is the data that we are going to model and analyze using statistical techniques. Of course, these techniques could also be used to the first kind of data that I mentioned. In fact, this is done very frequently in machine learning. But be careful to not confuse the two because there are some differences. When I say the word data in this course, I want you to hear result of an experiment, okay? Well, let's start with an example. We know that Tsukuba University is strong in sports, but let's say that we are doing an invest investigation to learn why. The first thing we need to do is to think of possible questions that we can investigate by an experiment. If we imagine that sport performance is related to physical characteristics of the students, what questions can we ask to investigate this idea? For example, we can ask if universities um, with taller students have better Olympic performance. To answer this question, we would need to gather data about the height of the students and the Olympic performance of several un different universities. This is a little bit, I mean, it's possible, but it would be a little bit involved, right? A related question would be, are students uh, in Tsukuba taller than normal in Japan? This seems to be a question a little bit easier to answer than the first one. But how can we define what is the representative height of students in the University of Tsukuba? To give you a very silly example, we could choose one student at random, you, I choose you, and I measure your height. Is, is your height representative of the entire university? So, if we take the height of only one student, there is a good chance that this student is either taller than normal or shorter than normal. It's very hard to know. So it would be better to take the height of several students, let's say 20 students from the university. But now I have 20 data points. And what can I do with this information? The question remains. Is the information about these 20 students representative of the entire university? How is it, is it possible to measure this representativeness? Before we start to answer these questions, let's note that we are starting to work with some very con important concepts in statistics 
And let me explain these concepts with their actual names. So we are going to use these names a lot in this course. Population, observation, and sample. So the basic idea of an experiment is to gather data about a system so that we can characterize the system. So in other words, we can learn about the system. These terms, population, observation, and sample, they refer to the relationship between the system that we are studying and the data that we obtain from the experiment. So in this case, population is all the possible values that could come from the experiment. So if our experiment is measure the height of a student, the population is the height of each student in the university. Note that population can also be a virtual set. Each student in the university is a concrete set. You can list it. But for example, if our experiment is to run a program and measure the running time of that program, our population are all possible results of all possible running times. If you think about it, this is an infinite set. You could always run the program again and again and again, and you might have slightly different values. Now, if the population is the set of all possible results, one observation is one result of this set. So the height, the height that we measure from one student or the running time that we measure from one execution of the program, these are one observation. Finally, sample. As I said in the last slide, if we measure the height of a single student, it's not very representative. So we usually want to collect the data of several observations. This set of observations is what we call a sample. So the goal of our experiment is we collect a sample and by analyzing the observations in the sample, we learn something about the entire population. It's important to note that what is a population, what is an observation and what is a sample depends on the object, on the experiment that we're doing and the system that we are studying. And we will see in future classes how these definitions can change depending on how we design the experiment. So let me repeat this part because it's very important for the entire course. The objective of an experiment is to learn something about the population by analyzing the observations of a sample. Imagine that we have a pool of plastic balls of different colors, and we want to understand this pool better. We could count every single ball and we could have perfect information, but that would be very expensive. And if the pool is very big, that could be impossible. So what we do is we collect a smaller number of balls and we see what we can learn from this smaller number of balls. For example, we can learn what colors are present in the pool, right? And we can estimate the proportion of colors in the pool by the proportion of colors in the balls in your hand. But it's important to remember that the balls in your hand are not the entire set of balls in the pool. There will be a difference and how we deal with this difference is very important. So, when I use information from the sample to understand the population, we say that we are building a model of the population from the sample. The model is a description of how we believe that the population exists. For example, in the case of the pool of plastic balls, we can say that the balls are equally distributed, so if we pick our sample from any part of the pool, we will obtain generally the say a similar sample. If we go back to the height of the students, we could, for example, describe the model that the height of the students in the university follows the curve of a normal distribution with a mean value and a standard distribution. Note that there is no rule that says that the university will only accept the students if they height or this curve. But after years of observing natural phenomena, we are very frequently observe 
that variation of natural characteristics follow this normal curve. So this is a reasonable model to assume in the beginning of an experiment if we don't have any other information. After we observe, obtain more information, we can and should ask ourselves if there is a better model for this information. Let me give you one more example. The SIR infection model is a model that describes how a disease spreads between people. So the model divides the people between susceptible, infected, and recovery. The susceptible people become infected with a fixed probability, and the infected people become recovering with another probability. Using this model, we can estimate the progress of a disease, and in this case, we can use the experiments to estimate for a certain disease what are the transition probabilities and check how many people uh, are in each group by a certain time. This last example shows a very common goal of experiments, to determine the values of parameters of models and then use these models to predict something about the world. Let me give you another example of model and parameters. Let's say that I have a model that describes a certain species of din dinosaur. We can imagine that this species has a minimum length and a maximum length. And it also has a minimum weight and a maximum height, etc., etc., like in this table. But how do I obtain these values? We can imagine that archaeologists will dig around and find fossils. And by measuring these fossils, this gives them some examples of dinosaurs. From these examples, we can estimate some values for minimum and maximum length, weight, etc. So, if all the fossils that I find are between 6 and 9 meters of length, I could say that for this species of dinosaur, the length is between 6 and 9 meters, and maybe the average of this length is around 7.5 meters. So this is how we would build a model from data that we obtain from an experiment. However, it's very important to note that the parameters that we found for this model are not the parameters of the true population of dinosaurs. These parameters were estimated from the sample, but the parameters of the population, which I usually say the true parameters, they might be and probably are different. In fact, we could be very wrong about the maximum and minimum values. For example, maybe small dinosaurs got eaten and never left any fossils, or maybe something else happened. Okay, the population is different from the sample. So for each parameter in this model, there is a true value from the population that we cannot know and an estimate value that we calculate from the experimental data. Our goal when we do an experiment is to calculate this estimated value that is as close as possible to the true value. So we want to calculate estimates to parameters of a model. To do this, we use statistics. A statistic is a function that takes experimental data as an input and calculate some estimate from that. A statistic is used when we want to estimate a parameter for a model from data that we obtain from an experiment. Let's go back to the example, I want to measure the running time of a program. One statistic to calculate the representative running time would be the average. So we run the program several times, we write down the observations, the running time of each execution, and we calculate a statistic, that is, the average of the running times. A few more examples would be the proportion of patients that got better from a disease taking a drug, or maybe the correlation between the size of a neural network and the accuracy of its results. In this week, we will talk about two types of statistics. The point estimator that calculates one value from the input data, such as the mean or the maximum or the correlation. The interval esti estimator that calculates a range of values from the input data. A classical example is the confidence interval. One thing that is important to understand about statistics is that mathematically, they are treated as random variables. In other words, in other words, to calculate the statistic using data from observations, uh, as the observations are sampled randomly from the population, the value of the observation is a random variable. 
This means that the value of the statistic is also a random variable. If you don't remember what a random variable is, I recommend that you check the first chapter of uh, the book, <clears throat> of any statistics textbook. But for our course, there are two important things about random variables that we need to remember. One, the statistic will have a different value every time that we calculated a new experiment. And two, these different values follow some distribution that we don't know initially. In other words, when we calculate a value from a statistic, this value is not a truth, but an approximation of the truth. Another way to think of a statistic is that you are throwing a dart at your model, and every time the dart will be a little bit away from the center, but at a, a different position. So, if a statistic is a random variable, it means that it follows some distribution, which we will call the sampling distribution. The sample distribution is a model that explains what kind of values we can expect from a statistic for a certain experiment. Let me give you a very trivial example. Consider these three statistics, the maximum of a sample, the mean of a sample, and the minimum of a sample. The value ca calculated by these statistics will be different every time you calculate them for a different sample. However, we expect the maximum to be bigger than the mean, and the mean to be bigger than the minimum. Now, there are more things that we can understand from the model that explains the statistic. For example, we can calculate how rare or how surprising a certain value should be based on the distribution. This calculation is the basis of statistical tests, which we will talk about next week. And here is where we went the first video. To summarize, from the point of view of statistics, the goal of an experiment is to obtain data, and we use this data to calculate the parameters of the model that describe the thing that we're trying to study. So, if we want to know if the students of Tsukuba are high, we can create a model that describes the height of the students as a normal distribution. And we conduct an experiment to estimate the mean of this distribution. This mean would characterize the height of the students. In the next two videos, I will give you some details about point estimators and interval estimators. See you there.